A very good morning to you. Welcome to the West Ham Voice on a Thursday morning. I hope you're all doing well. Um, if you've just come across this channel for the first time, and if you enjoy the content, then please do consider becoming a subscriber to the channel. It costs nothing to subscribe and all the content is always free. If you're new, if you're an existing um, uh, subscriber, or if you're just passing by and you enjoy the content, please also hit that like button uh, because when you do hit the like button, it elevates the um, channel in the algorithms of YouTube and gives it more uh, relevance, I guess. Anyway, what are we going to talk about this morning? Well, I guess the week has been dominated by the halftime fallout between Hulan Lopetegui and Mohamed Kudus during the game against Brentford last weekend. Now, we all have a fair idea as to what happened. Kudus was singled out by Lopetegui at halftime for not being a team player. And from the reports that we heard since, Kudus took exception to that and, and reached uh, in a, and reacted, should I say, in a manner in which he apparently had to be restrained. Now, whether his reaction uh, led him to being subbed or whether he was subbed and then reacted, we still don't know. But frankly, at this point, I'm not so sure, and I don't know if I really care as to what led to it. The important thing is that the changes that Lopetegui made at half time actually had the desired effect, and we got ourselves back into the game and we got a draw out of it. And I guess ultimately that's what mattered the most. Now, we hear that the club have been quick to jump to the defense of both player and head coach, suggesting that they have now sorted out their differences. Um, and that this isn't an issue anymore. And the club have tried to dispel any myth that the issue will persist and that everyone is now moving on and focusing on the next game, which is Ipswich this coming weekend. But I guess uh, things weren't helped by the photo of uh, Mohamed Kudus being uh, in attendance at the Arsenal Champions League game on Tuesday evening. Now, that's not helped the situation. And it's kind of added fuel to the fire, especially with Arsenal fans who are now creaming in their pants, thinking that Mohamed Kudus is going to be the next West Ham star to be joining them after Declan Rice did last season. Now, who knows? This may turn out to be true. Uh, and when this season is over, after all, Kudus is a top player. And there will be many clubs queuing up uh, to trigger his £85 million release clause in the summer. As far as I'm concerned, I don't think West Ham should be worrying about what may or may not happen in the 2025 summer transfer window when this season has barely gotten itself off the ground. What's more important now is the focus on this season and Hulan Lopetegui needs to find a formula that gets the best out of his star players like Kudus and in order to start winning games and climbing up the Premier League table. Now, that's got to be everyone's primary focus, everyone's primary concern, and the future will sort itself out one way or another. But here is where Lopetegui has a big dilemma uh, when, when the game against Ipswich comes up this weekend. There's no denying that we were actually more cohesive without Kudus in the second half against Brentford. We were more at it. We were closing the opposition down quicker. Um, we, we were creating more chances and we were playing as a unit rather than playing as individuals, of, uh, as many fans have alluded to this season. However, Brentford fans themselves are said to have been relieved by the fact that Kudus was uh, taken off at halftime because they believed he was our, our main threat. But Lopetegui may feel vindicated, and I'm sure he does feel vindicated by the changes given the outcome. But will Lopetegui use that second half lineup against Brentford as a blueprint for future lineups? What will preoccupy Lopetegui's mind is how he gets West Ham on a roll and how he gets us to start winning games on a regular basis. The issues we seem to currently have include the following. Uh, selecting the best team, which may not necessarily mean selecting 
the best 11 players available to Lopetegui. Lopetegui is beginning to show that he's got no sentiment for star players. If he feels that he has to drop them, then he will do. He has continued to emphasise that this is a squad game and that all the players in the squad must be ready when they're called upon. Now, how he gets uh, the best out of the players available to him may influence not only his team selection, but his tactics and his formation. Now, why has he maintained a 4-2-3-1 formation when his most effective formation in the past has been a 4-3-3? If he's to continue another issue using the high line, and there's no reason to suggest that he won't, then he needs to have a more agile midfield, players who are more nimble and have pace, as well as, you know, not looking sluggish and short of energy, which they have done in the middle of the park so far this season. And here is where Lopetegui really needs to earn his money and decide how he sets his team up and how he will make the best use of the resources available to him. And that leads me back on to Kudus. Will Lopetegui start Kudus against Ipswich this weekend? If so, where will he play him? If he insists on using Kudus on the left side and hope that he finally settles into that role, we may be in for a tough time. Because so far, it means it so far Kudus playing in that role has led to no goals, no assists, and no creative passes. But it also means if he starts Kudus on the left side, that yet again Crescencio Somerville starts from the bench. And we know in the game against Chelsea and the game against Liverpool, Somerville was probably our best player in those two games. Or does he really decide to actually bench Kudus for this game and play a sort of team that he did at the start of the second half against Brentford? It is possible that may that Lopetegui may opt to do this, but I'm not so sure that he will. If he does it, it will kind of suggest that rather than it being for tactical reasons, maybe, or this is what fans will think, maybe the rift between the two has not been sorted out. Now, I think Kudus will start, but in what position? For most of the season, I've been advocating that Lopetegui deploys Kudus on the right and plays Bowen up front as the striker. But there is an alternative um, to that as well. And that is to afford Kudus a role more centrally. And Lopetegui has got three options uh, in a central role for Kudus. He either plays him as an outright striker, which he's done in the past for Ajax. Uh, he use, uses him as a false number nine. Again, he's done in the past. Or he uh, puts him in the number 10 role that he usually plays for Ghana. Now, the first two options, the number, the outright striker and the false nine, uh, means not having to rely on either Antonio or Ings to lead the line. We know Fulkrug is still injured. He won't be back until after the international break, by the way. However, if he plays him in the number 10 role with a striker ahead of him, it means that Lopetegui has to make a decision on who he starts in midfield with the likes of Soler knocking on the door uh, and, and the first team return of Alvarez after suspension. And then there's obviously Suchek and Rodriguez and even Paqueta to consider. Now, Kudus himself has stated that the number 10 role is his best position. He does his best work as a number 10. Um, and I feel, to be honest with you, he can do that role really well. But I also feel that he's got the intelligence and ability to play a further up as a number nine or as a false number nine. And whilst we continue to have inconsistent performances from our strikers, as well as being burdened with striker injuries, would it be such a bad idea to put Kudus in that position? He's got pace. He's got skill. Um, this is one area of the pitch you don't necessarily mind if your player is a little bit greedy and has his head down because all he'll be doing in that false nine or number nine role is he's going to look to try and score. And so the thing about Kudus not, play, not being a team player out on the left-hand side, etc., 
it won't matter. You want your um, your uh, striker. Of course, you want him to be link up playing and stuff like that. But you want your striker to actually be a little bit greedy. And maybe that's where Kudus might be more effective for West Ham. But it also means that you can fit other players in who are really knocking on the door for first team game game time, like Soler, keeping Bowen in, like Somerville, like Paqueta, like Alvarez. You can then fit play around Kudus. I've kind of said, you know, got to get the best out of Kudus, got to play him in his prime position. But maybe, maybe affording him the role up front could end up being a bit of a masterstroke. It's going to be interesting to see what Lopetegui does. He does have the option of deciding that maybe the second half against Brentford was a better cohesive performance and the result proved that. But that would mean dropping Mohamed Kudus. And I'm not so sure we're quite ready to see Kudus starting on the bench anytime soon. Like I said, if you've enjoyed the content, if you uh, like what you've seen, etc., please do hit the like button. Please do become a subscriber and I'll be back again soon with another show.